the video will continue in a moment. But this video is actually meant to be a comparison between studio lights we use to shoot these kind of videos. And we generally use the Lupo studio lights for that. So we had the super panels, we had the Fresnels, but there's a new kit on the block, namely this one, which is the full color light, the full color super panel, but the full color 60. Because it's 60 centimeters wide, two feet, and it's a good time to compare it to the industry standard, which is the Airy Sky Panel 60. This one has been around for a while now, and it is the most widely used soft LED light for large productions. It's always difficult to make a fair comparison between products of different brands, because, well, they have different philosophies. And we thought the fairest is if we compare them in a few different categories. The first one being the ergonomics of both. The second is the intensity, the amount of light both lights can generate. Then a third category would be the quality of the light, which is also very important because both lights are not quite the cheapest in, in the market, but they're intended to be uh, at the top end of the spectrum of lights, a top end of production tools, so to speak. And lastly, we'll review what kind of features they have. So first up, ergonomics. If you take the lights out of the box for the first time, there's, there's a big difference. So this one, the Airy Sky Panel, used to a lot of people in the industry, it's a, it's a large light. At least you can say it's a bit uh, clunky and it's heavy, but you'll have to say, and that's why it's intended for, it's very sturdy, it's, uh, it has a very good build quality, but that comes at a lot of weight. There's some, a lot of plastic, but it's uh, rugged plastic, and the rest is all kind of, some kind of metal or aluminum. Right, uh, can you just uh, put the light on the stand? Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> now, the Lupo Light Super Panel Full Color 60, it's quite a mouthful to say, uh, it takes a different approach to the same problem, the ruggedness we all need on set. It is a reinforced technopolymer, which is some kind of a plastic, and there is some metal on it, being the yoke and uh, stuff like that, but mainly it's the kind of durable plastic. In build quality, they're really on par. But this one is a lot lighter. Both lights are built to withstand the test of time and, well, the mishaps of production. So that's a good thing about both lights, but this light has done it by being clunky and heavy. And this light is able to do it while still remaining sleek and light and easy to operate. If you have uh, some kind of uh, recording on a remote location, you'll be happy to carry this one around. And, well, this one not so much. The Airy Sky Panel, you have a display here and you have the, the knobs to uh, set your intensity and your color and whatever, which is all good and fine. But then you have here the ballast to make it work, which you need. And if you connect it to the main body, which you will probably do in most cases, then, then we, we had a little problem. Whenever you mount it a bit higher, let's say higher than eye level, and you want to change out the color, you can't see the, the display or what's on it, and you can't easily reach the knob. So that's a bit of a problem. That's a lot nicer here. It's easy to come by and you can always read the display. It's a small thing, but it makes a, a lot of difference. The second thing is the ballast itself. On the, the 60 it's okay, but on the 30 it's so big that it doesn't have the leeway for the light to turn every way because it gets caught up uh, in the yoke. You have to say that Lupo, although it uses for the 60 two different ballasts, it still is a more elegant solution. Actually the ballasts on the Super Panel uh, Full Color 60 are interchangeable with those of the Full Color 30, so that's always nice if you have a lot of lights you can throw them in one bag. 
as our story continues, our main character, Damien here, is gonna go through this uh, narrow uh, hallway. And we have the alarm in the background that makes up her backlight. There are windows in this hallway and there's a little bit of light coming in from there. But we need a little bit of fill on this side of her face. So we have a bit of consistency throughout the entire shot because she's walking here. She's walking in uh, the side light, but if we go on, there is no longer any windows. So that is generated by this uh, super panel. It's a super panel 60, so a large panel, which would make for nice catch lights in her eyes and also a nice soft fill. And we can operate it on batteries and that's a quite a handy feature. That's exactly what we need because we need to travel quite a distance and working with a cable here would be a problem. The camera and the dolly and the light all move backwards. So we keep the same distance to her. So not only it's interesting to have a, a large light that's still compact enough to fit in this uh, very narrow hallway, but it's also easy to operate it on two single batteries so we can uh, freely move around to make this shot. The Arri 60 is a different story. Now, you can work with an adapter of Arri, which takes two batteries, but then you can only work up to half intensity that the light is actually capable of. One more thing, specifically to the sky panel. The sky panel has this uh, latch system where you can actually open up the light and you can exchange this uh, front uh, plate with another one, which is quite neat. And there's also the possibility for this one to have a uh, a remote specifically to this light. While it's a nice thing to have a remote, you can always exchange that or solve that problem while working with DMX and DMX is standard on uh, the Lupo panel as well. Now onto our second topic of the comparison, the intensity. And actually there's three lights that come into play. So we already have the full color, the Lupo Super Panel full color and the sky panel, but we also have the Lupo Super Panel 60, which is a new addition to the lineup as well. This one is mainly a lot more intense, but it doesn't feature any of the colors that these two lights can uh, produce. It's just white light. The Arri outputs about 9,500 up to 10,000 lux. And we measured that at one meter uh, from the front of the light where the Lupo outputs just under 9,000 lux, which is a bit lower. The difference is not uh, incredible. We saw there was a little discrepancy between the readings we had at uh, 3,200 K. Then it was quite a bit less intense than uh, the Airy uh, sky panel. But the difference became less and less and at 5,600K 5, the difference between both is at a minimum. But still the Airy is a little bit more intense. Now that's where the third light comes into play. If you go to the normal dual color of Lupo, it outputs a whopping 69,000 lux at one meter. Now the difference is because it is uh, it is more directed in a, in a smaller space that the intensity is a lot higher, obviously. But if you just need the intensity and you don't care about the possibilities of mixing in some specific color, this light operates at an entirely different level than those two. Where the difference is, it, I'm not going to say it's minute, but the difference between those two is small, to say the least you can go to very, very different uh, light solutions that give you uh, another world of light. And our story continues in a specific place where we do need light. So this is the shot where we can put the intensity to the test of our super panels. Now our uh, main character is gonna run from an explosion that's gonna occur right after. First, in this light, this is a Fresnel, and as she goes on, 
she'll soon come in a more dark area but we need to light it up because we need to compensate for a whole lot of light that the fire is going to create and this place which is going to look dark is actually lit by two large super panel 60s and we have a little bit of fill on that side with normal super panel uh, 30s just to give a little bit of a fill and not uh, too much of a dark side. It's still going to look dark and that's the intent that we have but it's, it needs to be dramatic obviously. Because we shoot this in slow motion at 240 fps we have a shutter of uh, 1 480th of a second and also the um, the actual explosion is going to occur there several yards from where she actually falls and we want to have a rather large depth of field so that's why we need an iris that's closed down uh, pretty much so we can keep everything in focus as much as we want It's arguably the most important topic of all if you compare lights, what is the actual quality? And we did a lot of measurements there. Also, you have to remember both lights are aimed at the absolute top level of the market. So you expect them to score very high. And that's actually what they are supposed to do in my mind. Now, the way to uh, measure this is by making measurements of uh, CRI, but most importantly of TLCI. If you don't know exactly what TLCI and CRI is or just want to have some background, we recommend you check out this link. It's a video we made explaining especially what it is, how it works, how it's measured and what it means. But the short version is TLCI is the thing you want to look at. TLCI is what measures if your light is any good for reproducing colors and light for camera systems. Now the results of our measurements, well it's, it's something to talk about. So again, let me get my results. So first up, if you look just at the CRI, which is an old measurement and it's not really that important, but then we can say that all these lights score very, very well. 94 for the loop was even over 96. Then again, these are lights aimed at cinema and video professionals. So we expect a little bit more than a good rating on a CRI. We want to have a good TLCI. Normally the TLCI deteriorates a bit if the color temperature drops. So a lower color temperature of 3200K generally yields a lower TLCI. But the Lupo did very, very well. That's the first thing we'll focus on. If I take the reading and actually we had pretty much exactly the same measurements for uh, the, the non-color Super Panel 60. But we have readings of TLCI with the lowest of 95.8 at 3200K, which is surprisingly very, very good. And at 5600, we even go up to 96.4. So this light is actually nearly perfect for uh, video and cinema production. Now this light, well actually we were a little bit, dare I say, flabbergasted. A TLCI at 5600K of 88.6. It is less than you would expect for a, a top end light. We were actually surprised by this rating. But then we uh, lowered the color temperature to 4500, which still yielded 85.2. And then we dropped it to 3200 and eventually at that color temperature we ended up with just a TLCI score of 83.7. You have to put in perspective what that means. This is in terms of quality of the output of light by no means by the the front runners in technology. If you read what TLCI means, this is just acceptable and with some color correction it is passable. 
while this one produces light that is perfectly to use just as is. Also, as most people know, I'm a scientist, so I look a bit different at the numbers and it's just not the numbers. We, we want you to have a specific look at the spectra that come out of this light and this light. If you look at a spectrum that's generated by the LUPO, you see a very smooth uh, graphic, a very smooth spectrum, which is very much like the one of a natural color source, which you actually try to reproduce. It's quite smooth, um, especially at 3200, it's pretty much the same, or it looks very much like the one of a classical light bulb. Then again, if you look at uh, spectra that come out of the sky panel, it's a bit of a mess. All of the spectra have a lot of peaks. It is easier to fool the CRI rating than you can fool the TLCI rating. Now, if you look at the messy spectrum that is generated by this airy sky panel, it's actually no wonder that you end up with a TLCI score that is a lot lower than that of the LUPO. Then again, we like to stress that we were surprised by this. A light of such a respected brand and it has very good uh, build quality has been used for years. It's been the, the sturdy partner on so many productions. But actually, then again, you'll have to look at the technology that's available today. And if you see what this light can bring, then we, we can only say we expected better from this one. Next up, features. They have about the same range of color temperature and you can make an adjustment towards green or magenta. That's the same in both. Then you have the mode of uh, selecting your color, your specific hue, the saturation, mixing it with white. That's pretty much the same on both lights. So they do that quite well. It's, it's all fine. But then the light effects. It used to be such a drag if you had a fire in your story and you needed uh, some lighting that emulated fire. There was a lot of fuss and uh, someone waving in front of a light and it's interesting that these lights can do it but fire seems such a basic uh, effect. This one has it and this one doesn't. There is a difference. The Lupo unfortunately has a lot less effects than Ari has. Lupo tell me they will um, enhance the number of effects in, in the future, whether it will be updatable or so. It's anyone's guess at this point, it's a very new product. Now then again, if you were going so far, there's always the possibility to emulate some kind of effect through DMX, but that's a lot of fuss. It is easier to just dial it in and make some changes. Onto our story. Our main character has seen the explosion of the last video and when she comes up there's a cop car already coming and as some result of the fire of the explosion we just had. So that's the ideal scenario to showcase the effect modes. We have our talent and a camera on it. The camera will be dollying further from our subject. And as a key we have a sky panel that is uh, set to the fire mode. And as a backlight, we use the Lupo Super Panel Full Color set to Cop Car. That will emulate the Cop Car that's approaching. Just a little fill uh, to make the hole a little bit softer and less contrasty. And there's also an additional back from a Fresnel with a cookie. So this is the resulting shot. Although the fire mode on the area was set to its maximum, its most root and wildly shifting mode, um, we were still quite disappointed. The effect seems a little too mild to us. Um, I've worked with the roto lights in the past and the fire mode there works better. The sky panel and the super panel, they fit into a larger lineup. So first up we have the small panels in the lineup. So for Lupo these are the full color 30, the super panel full color 30 and for Ari it's the Ari sky panel S30C. Let's get our measurements out of the way first. Intensity, that's about the same. So the Lupo is a little bit more intense at 3200K, but the Ari is a little bit more intense at the 5600K mark. Now, it's very close, there isn't a lot in it. But then again, the TLCI is a big story here. 
It has to be said that the Lupo can produce light of a truly impeccable character. Generally around 97, which is really as good as it gets. TLCI at 3200 is typically lower, but at 3200K the Lupo records a monster score of almost 96. You'd be hard pressed to find any light with a better score, and I don't even think there are any lights out there that have better scores. The Airy Sky panel on the other hand has more pedestrian results for its color reproducing skills. They are better than our readings for the Sky Panel 60, but especially the TLCI at 3200K is too low for a premium studio light. Right, on to the usability. These are comparable lights and as you can see the Lupo is a lot smaller than the Arri. Uh, both have serious uh, Build quality, you can, you can see them withstand whatever you throw at them on set. They, uh, they're built for a serious set life, that, that shouldn't be a problem. But Ari has a different approach to it, a different philosophy about it than uh, Lupo. Lupo is on a, a techno polymer, it's, uh, it's quite sturdy, but it's quite light as well. If you're used to the Lupo, the Ari seems a bit... Um, out of place. It's all metal but due to the large plastic uh, corners and the back it does look a bit like a toy. It does uh, look a bit uh, Playmobil like. If you wouldn't know it was Airy and everything it stands for you might not think it has the price tag it has. Uh, the size is one thing but the weight is another. So the Lupo is, is quite light and easy enough to carry with one hand and place it where you want. That's never going to be a problem. The Airy is a different, different thing. It's, it's not like you can't lift it and you have, a, you have a handle, but even grabbing the handle, well, it's, it's about three times the weight, I think, and it's a bit too much. <laughs> uh, this one is easy. Uh, this one, I'm, I'm getting too old for this. This is a design issue no one here could wrap his head around. This is the ballast. So you have the connection from the ballast to your light. And then you have the power plug. But if the power plug is in here and this is connected to the light, there is no way you can clear the light uh, from going uh, around the bracket so some positions are a bit as you can see this is the maximum you can go it's hmm, it's those small things that make it less usable and the weight to make matters worse if you want to have battery operated uh, lights that is not a problem whatsoever with the Lupo, because you can just add one battery. Now you can say it is possible to operate these uh, on batteries as well. The problem is I don't have it here. But if you attach a battery adapter, you have two battery mounts and you need both batteries. Which adds to the problem of the light already being a bit overweight. And then there's this. So, you have the Airy Sky Panel as you can see, as you're used to it, and the Lupo, which have both the, pretty much the same diffuser, and they are quite diffuse. But there is, there's a different philosophy with Airy. You can open it up and remove this screen, like so, and you can exchange it for this screen, which is called the intensifier. And what it does is what's in the name, intensify your light beam. Now it is more focused than, than it would be with, uh, with the other, uh, the standard plate, but it will give you more uh, intensity. Now this is perhaps some kind of uh, different philosophy both brands have. With Lupo you can choose between the complete diffuse uh, super panel or you can choose a super panel that doesn't have the diffuser and that is a lot more uh, intense. But then you have to have two different lights. With Airy it's all in one. It's just a different approach to the same problem, I suppose. 
Uh, having said that, because there's two lights with Lupo, you have an added bonus of an even higher output of even 22,000 lux. So here's a shot where we use two lights together. So the Lupo light on top and the Arrow uh, sky panel uh, below. But they work together just to uh, light our talent. And the camera takes a shot with a long focal length from right in between the two lights. What this setup actually yields is this typical beauty shot. But now our key light is in one go our catch light as well. That's why in the eyes you have the interesting reflection of the two large lights. We had a little problem matching the two lights. We could easily uh, match them together. That wasn't the initial problem. But then we changed the intensity on the Ari. And uh, because of changing the intensity, apparently um, it shifted towards green. Uh, I don't know exactly why that is, but it happened and we needed to compensate it uh, then on the Lupo, which we hadn't changed at all. So there apparently in the array seems to be a little bit of a shift, at least with these lights in a CCT mode and with the green and magenta correction, you can easily match lights. So we wanted to recreate a typical uh, hero shot and with uh, all the reflective surfaces on the suit, it would be nice to have an elongated light source, some kind of a strip light. So suppose you have a LED light, a Lupo light of yourself, but you need to have an extra light to make such a long uh, light. You might want to rent out an extra one. And at this point, uh, Lupo lights are still very new, so rental places might not have them just yet. But the area lights are easily available in rental houses. So that's why we demonstrated it here with an uh, airy light below and a loophole light uh, on top and together they create one long light. The whole setup is as follows. So you have the strip light, just a little bit of fill because otherwise you might have on, on this side of her face a little bit too much darkness, too much dramatic feel uh, because the strip light is almost completely to her right. And then we have those backlights and some others you can't see that are below there to enhance the smoke that will fill up uh, the background. So in a general conclusion, we have to say the ergonomics are different. This one is heavy. This is pretty much like we like it. So we were, well, not so happy with the weight on this one. That was the first thing. Then the intensity, well, there's a difference, but not a big one. They're pretty much similar lights with a little more output, but then the big surprise came with the, with the TLCI rating of this light, which is actually, frankly, too low for the sector and the people that uh, it is aimed at, uh, in, our, in our frank uh, opinion, so to speak. And then uh, the features it has, still a bit more. But for us, we think because the TLCI is so low, that it really trumps the other things it might have as an advantage over this one. Especially if you think that the, that the things that are important, such as the ruggedness and so, are pretty, and the intensity, let's say, are pretty much on par. So they are what you expect, but this light can do it while being light and while having a perfect color scores on TLCI. If, if we were to choose a winner, we would know. But then again, it's not about being uh, a winner and a loser. Both are professional lights and there's still uh, a lot worse lights, but we think yeah, there's a clear difference and it's up to you which one uh, you would choose. Uh, you can always uh, put it in, in the comments. You have seen our readings. You know, we have t uh, told you quite frankly what we think about it, but if you have another opinion on it, please feel free to uh, note it in the comment. Now, more videos are coming, so please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification button uh, so you won't miss a thing. And check out these other videos we have as well.